Well, we are honored uh, that Virginia Poden is our guest speaker tonight, and I believe it's 29 years today, on this very day, that she was freed from the communist regime in Romania. So what a privilege that on this very day we can celebrate that with her. So it's wonderful, 29 years. Let me just tell you a little bit about Virginia. Virginia Proden is a speaker, author at Tyndale, international human rights attorney, victory coach, and is also an allied attorney with the Alliance Defending Freedom. She literally faced her assassin and lived to tell it. Virginia is passionate about mentoring others to stand up to their giants and create courageous, purpose-filled, and abundant lives. She's a sought-after international speaker and has published articles in the Christian Post, Focus on the Family, Citizens Magazine, Christianity Today, The Daily Signal, American Thinkers, and many, many more. Virginia currently lives in Dallas, where she enjoys practicing law, writing, opera, swimming, and traveling for pleasure. She has two daughters, Anka and Andrea, and a son, Emmanuel. As Jensen Bard said, in the wake of mourning, anger, hostility, and great sadness sweeping our nation, there's one woman whose, star, whose story changed the narrative of horrific circumstances to tremendous hope. Her release memoir, Saving My Assassin, is the astounding, powerful, and true story of life in Romania under communist rule and the freedom that would come choosing faith over fear, Christ over com communism, and souls over self. Remarkable, heartbreaking, and liberating. Would you join me in welcoming our speaker, Virginia Proden. It is a privilege and an honor. I hope you can hear me. It's a privilege and an honor to be with you today. I'll never forget, it was almost this time, 29 years, years ago, when I was looking through the window as the airplane flew close to Dallas, Texas. It was a long time ago. You heard a lot about my presentation, and thank you so much. You did such a great job, didn't she? You, yes, thank you, thank you. But all I can say is I'm a child of God. That's nothing more important than to be a child of God. And I will share with you lots of things. But I want to make sure that when you go home, you don't say, I met a hero, because that's not true. I met a tool of God, a little tiny woman under five feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> and she is just a tool, nothing else. And my desire is to show you how big our God is. And what he has done is not finished yet with me, and what he is able and he will be able to do if you allowed him to do it. I came to the United States, as I said, 29 years ago. I did not know one word in English. I did not have one dollar in my pocket, and I had with me two daughters under 10 years old, and I was pregnant with my son. I learned English as fast as possible, not fast as my daughters. <laughs> and I went to law school back to SMU Law School this time, and I graduated from SMU Law School in three years with what you normally do in four years with two degrees, a Juris Doctor and a Master of Laws. In the same time, raising my three kids as a single mom. 
Only God can do that. <laughs> I was driving and, uh, and every morning to three schools and going to my school, SMU Law School, and I never had a speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> After I graduated from law school, I uh, started my own law firm. And with the power of God and his help, I raised my three kids. My first daughter graduated from SMU like me. My second daughter from Harvard Law School. And my son from United States Air Force Academy. <laughs> this is America the best country in the world. It's not perfect, but the best country in the world where you work hard and you can accomplish what you are willing to do, what God put on, on your heart. But uh, you had seen in the um, short clip about my book, Saving My Assassin, I Should Be Dead buried in an unmarked grave in Romania. Obviously, I'm not. God had other plans. I grew up in a country where I remember, maybe I was six years old, I remember my parents be being very politically correct outside of home and doing whatever the government asked them to do. And I also watch them inside of our home, whispering about how horrible the government was. As a young kid, I was petrified. I knew that if something happened to me, the government or my parents will not take care of me. The reason I'm saying this is because I want you to know that your kids and your grandkids are watching you that you say words or not, they can pick up what you think and what you want to do. But as a young, young kid, six years old, I remember we had a very, we had a small family, but we had a very important uh, reunion every single year. You will read more details about this in the book. And what I watch is that when my relatives, lawyers were there, everybody will come and ask questions. And it looked to me like a six years old kid that those lawyers had the answer. And all of a sudden I said, wow, I found the way. I'm going to go to law school and find out the truth and speak up for the truth. You'll find out that God had a better way. He let me go to law school, but <laughs> a better way. I do not have time to, to tell you all the details, but I, I assume the majority of you were born in this country, in freedom. But freedom is not the same or does not exist for others. If you are young and you want to go to medical school and your parents are, are lawyers or architects, nobody will say to you, no, you cannot go. But under the communist or socialist system, the government is the one who decides your uh, career. So at that time, I did not know those things. So learn it from me. That sometimes it's good not to know everything <laughs> in life. <laughs> so I uh, learned later on that in order for me to be admitted at law school in Romania and communist, my political file had to pass the government. You have to know that from the minute that you're born to the minute that you die, and communist and socialist, the government keeps a file on you. You have no access to that file. You cannot tell them, hold on just one second, this is wrong, I can prove and you can correct that, no. And they will put all kind of things there, and based on what is there, they will guide you, guide you where to go to law school. Well, the three uh, questions that the government was looking in my file were the following. If my parents ever um, initiated something to 
um, be like a demonstration or something like this against the communist government and maybe they were put in jail. No. The other thing was if my parents were ever reported by their kids or relatives for saying something against the communist government at, in home. No. The third one was if my parents were Christians. So I passed the test. The reason the government has this test, I found out later on in the interrogation room. Because according to the government, when a person is allowed, is giving the favor to be um, a law school student, you become part of the elite of the society. Because later on, after you graduate from law school in a communist country, the government expected you to be a judge, a lawyer, uh, an ambassador, and so on. That's good so far, yeah? The next part is that you're supposed to defend the government against its people. And for that reason, they had to pick and choose those, those people. There are a few things in common with uh, law school in the United States and law school in Romania, and that is thick books. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Thick books. <laughs> but I have to tell you, when I was in Romania and I was accepted, all the four years that I have to go to law school, it was just a joy for me. Every day I will learn, every day I will open a book and I say, I'm going to find the truth there. That's my mission. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn it so well and, and you know, I'll be able to help others to speak up. So. It wasn't, it wasn't a chore for me, so I enjoyed law school. And here I am, graduated from law school, and uh, um, I, won't, uh, I, I don't have the time to explain. The, the book explains in, in details that when you finish a law school, you just don't open your law firm on the right or side uh, part of the street, like in America. No, <laughs> the socialists and communists have their rules, so you will find them in the book. What I, I was going as a, as a lawyer in Romania every single day with hope that today is going to be my day. After all, after everything that I learn, I will just put in practice, I will find the truth, and that's, that's what, what's going to happen. So after a few years, I came to my office and I put my uh, uh, briefcase on my secretary's desk and I said, I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. I can't find the truth. And I, I have been doing this for a very long time. She looked up to me like, okay, welcome to reality. Where have you been? I don't know. <laughs> so she said, well, those are the three files. The three people will come and see you, and one is in your office. So I was so hurt. Nobody listened to me. So I, I walk into my office thinking, where is the truth? Why I cannot find the truth? Uh, as I walk into, into the office, I recognize the client. I have been working with my client for more than a year. Very good person, very good person. But from time to time talking with him, I remember saying, I need to strengthen up this, this man. I need to fix him. He is full of uh, love, full of patience, full of hope in a place where something like this never existed. Mm -hmm. But that, that day in particular, he was putting documents, new documents on my desk and talking. I did not hear anything that he said. In my brain, where, where is the truth? And all of a sudden, I looked to him and I said, I want to have in my life what you have in your life. He looked up at me like, do you go to church? And I, I was thinking, I am so sorry I asked. I mean, <laughs> What in the world going to church has to do with joy and peace and all the things that you have that I want to have? But he kept writing on a piece of paper and gave it to me and said, would you like to come to church, to my church? And I heard myself saying yes. The craziest things that a lawyer in communist can say. I don't know what you do at your church. I don't know if 
the government will uh, arrest me or take my license away or something, but I go, you know. I was that determined. I was that determined. So the next Sunday with my girls, I was walking into his church. He was outside waiting for, for us. So as I was walking in the church, I heard the choir singing, Sinner, come home. And I was thinking, these people are really welcoming. There is a man, his name is Sinner, and he's coming <laughs> home today. I have no idea, I have no idea who God is, what sin is, and so forth. So nothing, absolutely. So. We, uh, we were told where to sit, we stood there, and the pastor came, opened the Bible and said, I am, Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. The church was huge and quiet, and all of a sudden, imagine that you hear someone saying, what? That was me. <laughs> Because after all, after years, finally somebody said, I am the truth. And the lady by me put the Bible, opened the Bible, showed me the Bible verse, and I got glued to the pastor. And that day, I became a child of God. I accepted Christ. And that day, my life was changed forever. Not only that I became a child of God, but soon after that, a lot of um, Christians will come to me and ask me to help them uh, because they were persecuted by the government. Um, many of them were put in jail because they have a, a Bible and they share it with others. Or they transported a Bible from a church to another. You'll find all the, the majority of, or some of the cases, as an exemplification of what kind of persecution was in Romania. And I'm a family, just family, that will um, watch the Jesus movie. And for unknown reason, the government will know somehow. And they will come and, and destroy the door, take the parents to jail, and the kids to orphanage, and nobody will find out about them. So I started to defend all of this, all, all of those cases. So my life was changed as, as a Christian, as a child of God. But because I started to defend Christians, the government decided to move me from the elite of the society, from a spy or someone who is fighting. In the interrogation room, in fact, I was told that those laws that I can I use, they were laws only for American people, so in Romania I can receive the most favored national status, but not for lawyers to use it in the courtroom. But when God gives you a, a mission, because I believe that's the reason why he put on my heart that he wanted me to find the truth. God gives you absolutely everything. I'll try to exemplify for you a few things. Maybe I, I won't be able to do everything that is in the book, but I want you to remember that if God puts a desire, he put the desire to find the truth and the law in, in my heart. For you might be different. Do not believe that you don't have what it takes. Uh, you are not smart as others and so forth. Because God is the one who gives you the mission and he is the one who will be with you step by step. I have to tell you that even now, uh, and I don't want to uh, scare you, but when God gives me a mission, my first reaction is, oh, I can't do it, Lord. <laughs> that's, that's the way. And I see his face looking back to me saying, I can do it through you. That's all I need. So let me give you a few examples. Here I am, a young lawyer. And I want you to imagine how young I was. I won't tell you, but just imagine. In Romania at that time, we, we will go from 12th grade directly to uh, graduate school. I was 21 when I graduated from, from law school. Okay, I'll tell you this. 
So here I am in, um, with all those cases and everybody coming to me and saying, please help us. What do you do uh, as a lawyer? You search the law and see, uh, do they have any, anything that I can defend them and so forth? And the Lord helped me to find the law in the books. They were there during the capitalist era, but the dictator did not take the books, uh, the laws away because they wanted to trick the Americans and say, well, we have the law protecting, no, nobody used them. So not only that, but I am telling you from my own example, God is so detail oriented. He never works the same as me, but I'll, I'll tell you that he is very, very detail oriented. When he showed me uh, those laws, I heard him clear, and I know you hear me several times that I see, uh, I talk with the Lord, the Lord talk to me, and uh, it's true. You can call me crazy, you can, I, I am crazy for Christ, I know that. <laughs> um, so he also told me to make copies of those laws. I had no idea why, but when I was in the courtroom and the judge looked at me and the uh, prosecutor looked at me like, you're crazy, what are you talking about? I took the copies and I gave it to them. Well, I didn't know anything else than that because when I was talking, I was facing the court, okay? But later on in night, as I went home, uh, during the communists, we were not allowed to listen to Voice of America or Free Europe. Um, but we all listened. We all listened because that was our window to freedom. That was our window to freedom. And here I am listening to Voice of America, and they describe me. They describe everything that I have done in the courtroom, how I was dressed, what, how many kids I have, and all my arguments. And it was... It was very good because the world knew about me, but I knew at the same time that the secret police, the government officials, were able to come inside of the house and arrest me anytime, anytime at all. So for a very long time, I was thinking, how in the world is it possible that they are not allowed Voice of America and Free Europe to come to Romania, not in a courtroom, but they do have those information. Later on, I learned that as I was talking to the court and giving them those copies, I give them the copies in front of the entire universe. Behind me, there were representatives from all the um, um, United States, England, France, all the embassies, they were there because they never heard about a tiny little woman under five feet tall, 82 pounds at that time. They would take the government to court and say, those are the laws, respect them. <laughs> that was God's way to protect me. We don't have to know all the details and everything that God is providing for us. Nothing, absolutely nothing. I mean, for, for the reason for that I, I was, God gives you the courage also uh, to do what he's asking you to do. You will find out more in the book again. I was pushed in the, in the intersection, so um, to look like an accident and the Lord protected my life. I was followed by, by secret, uh, police secret service every single minute of, of my life. I was interrogated every single day, beaten, tortured. Um, I will come home and I will find food uh, on the table because they ate my food, but they were not allowed to poison me. I also learn what we many times we read in the Bible. Pray for your enemies and love your enemies. I know I remember being uh, full of blood in the interrogation room and the Lord told me, tell them about my love. Tell them about me and I do remember 
full of pain at the end of my robe, looking at them and saying, I don't like what you're doing, but I know God loves you. And I had only the power to say, and I choose to love you. They were huge. Every, I know everybody is taller than me, but they were huge, <laughs> huge guys with guns and all kind of things to impress me. And they would turn their heads and tears will come down. They didn't know what to do with me because the love of God conquers everyone, absolutely. And we are not here to live for ourselves, but for him. I'm saying and I'm trying to say from the bottom of my heart because it's so true, there is no high honor that to suffer for Christ and with Christ. There is no. We shouldn't be afraid. We should walk in his love and do what he's asking us to do. God is always preparing us for every single step. And I don't want to scare you, but anytime I, I graduated from one assignment from God, he gave me a bigger <laughs> one. <laughs> I remember the day that he gave me an assignment and I, and I said, Lord, this will give my enemies the legal opportunity to pick up the gun and, and kill me. But I said, I will do it. And late at night, I created a pocket in my suit and I put the documents there. Knowing that I go the next day outside of my house, the secret police following me, and they will interrogate me and they will search me and there will be a possibility to find it and to be dead. But you know what? That day they forgot to search me. And I was able to give the documents to the American Embassy and to prove the entire world that our dictator is still lying and killing people because they believe in Christ. And I was petrified, to be honest with you, later on in night, the same night, when I heard the voice of America that President Reagan has the documents. And I was thinking, how is that possible? I gave it to them a few hours ago. It's America. But then I was thinking, they are Americans. I mean, they have their way, so. <laughs> the next day, you can imagine, they kind of believe 99% 9 that I was guilty of that, but they didn't have a proof. So they interrogated me and they beat me and they did everything that was possible. You will find out reading the book that one of the things that really helped me is memorizing the Bible, uh, memorizing God's promises, memorizing what God wants me to do, reminding myself. I advise you um, not only to memorize those things, I know I do myself this, but memorize also what God says, do not do it. I really believe by memorizing, do not do it, that saved my life. It was the day after President Ronald Reagan got the documents and said we take the most favored national status from Romania, it's not working, the dictator is taking our money. So here I am in the interrogation room. They beat me more than ever before. So I don't know. They asked me to sign the documents that I am the one pro that I provided the documents and they were false documents created by me. And I said, no, I don't want. And they kept, um, you know, doing all kind of crazy things to me. And I do remember, I don't know if I was ready to submit to them or not, but I do remember the Lord saying, do not be terrified by them because I will terrify you in front of them. And it was like a cold water on my body that gave me an amazing power to know that God is there. There is no reason, even if I die, 
there is no reason to be afraid of these people. So God's word is powerful and we need to set up time and memorize. We have no idea when and how the verse and Bible verse will, will help us and will bring to our, our mind and heart what not only that God is with us, but what God wants with us. I remember hearing that President Reagan wants to take the most favored national status. And um, I knew that in, in the minute that he will take the most favored, favored national status from Romania, the things will go even worse to me. But I never imagined that will be that way. So here I was in my office, clo almost close to 5 o'clock, and my secretary was ready to leave the office. And a new client came to my office. She introduced him to me, and she left. And he was six, I believe, six ten foot tall. And I, I remember invited him in, in my office. And as the minute that I invited him in my office, he closed the door and said to me, sit down on the chair, the two chairs. And I was thinking, he's my client and he's ordering me. <laughs> but I was so tired, I didn't pay any attention. So I stood there. The minute that I stood there, he pulled his jacket took his gun and pointed to me. He said, I'm not your client. I'm here to kill you. And he gave me details about who sent him and so forth because he was very convinced, as I was convinced at that minute, that I would die there. I remember my stomach was making noise. I heard my, my heart in my ears. My knee was shaking so hard that I had to put my, my palms on, on my knees. I believe my, my face was red. My life flew in front of me like in a few minutes. I heard one more time what my relatives, friends, and enemies told me, stop, don't do it anymore. We're going to find you dead. And all that tumult that was in me and around me, he was screaming and saying how he's going to kill me. I heard the whisper of God, share the gospel with him. And because we didn't have Bibles in Romania, or when we had, it was very dangerous. We learned Bible verses by heart. We learned the gospel, and we learn more than that. Everything that we thought that would be good for us to learn and uh, to be reminded in hard time. So it was very easy for me to, um, to tell, uh, to start reciting uh, the Bible verses to him. And as I am saying the gospel by heart, I see him putting the gun down, and his shoulder went back. He was like melting under God's word. And I'm looking at him. I'm human. And I'm thinking, when I finish, he's going to kill me. And I lost my thoughts. And as I lost my thoughts, I paraphrased. And after two or three sentences, he reached for the gun. And I pray and I said, Lord, remind your word. And he did. And I said, I continue the Bible, and he accepted Christ right there in front of me. When I wrote the book, I never imagined that he will contact me and he will write a chapter in this book. <laughs> Only God can do this. Because God called us to something that is impossible. He doesn't, he didn't call me. When I was in Romania, he knew that one day, on my 29th anniversary, you'll be here and I will talk with you. He knew 
maybe not all of you, but I know many of you went to Romania, maybe during that period or later. A few years ago, I went back to Romania with Channel 8. They did a story, and as I was there um, and filming in the courthouse, some of my friends, and not that friends, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> lawyers and judges and prosecutors, uh, watch what we were doing, and at one point, very loud, so the uh, Channel 8 were able to hear, the team said, Virginia, if you have any time at all, please come and talk with us. So one day, the leader of the Channel 8 said, Virginia, tomorrow, you have time, go and call your, your friends. So I did. We met at the Rotonda in um, uh, at the courthouse, and they were all smiling, and I was walking towards them, and I was thinking, oh boy, they're gonna tell me they got married, and they have kids, and they have houses, it's not communist anymore. I was wrong. Each one of them took me to their office and showed me at their office the Bible. They told me that after revolution they went to my church and they accepted Christ. And now they work for Christ. Your life will touch people that the Lord might allow you to know or not. They also told me something. They were just kind of looking at each other like, shall we tell, shall we tell? At one point I said, come on, what's, what's the deal? And I said, we have been talking for a very, very long time about you, Virginia. And it's true. It's, we all got to the same conclusion. You in front of us, and many years at that time, we were thinking, oh, I want to kill Virginia. She's killing my, my, uh, my job. I can't do anything but, you know, let her win. And the government will come after me, and so forth. But beside that, we have to tell you that we all recognize that in your hardest moment, when you were surrounded by the two policemen with guns bigger than you, your face was shining. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Our lives will touch people, will change lives, and that's the reason why we're here. After I finished with them, I went and I visited a few uh, churches in Romania, and it was so beautiful, not only that they were there, that I saved them, but they were extended and so forth, and I was so happy. And I, I was walking uh, towards the, the hotel, and all of a sudden I remember, oh my gosh, I have to stop and buy some gifts for my kids. They are waiting for some Romanian gifts. And I had no idea that God had the biggest gift for me. I was entering a library, a bookstore in Romania, so to buy something for my kids. But you have to imagine that I was walking into the bookstore with the mind of, Roma of Virginia and Romania. When I lived in Romania, every library, every bookstore, your own library, had to have only dictator's books, not even classics. And here I am, walking into the, the bookstore, opening the doors, and half of the store is full with Bible. I walk two steps, and I knelt down there, and I cried as a baby. I didn't pay attention who was there, but I do remember saying, Lord, why do you show me this? It's so overwhelming. And he said, Virginia, I change a country through you. You cannot come back here and do, I don't need you here. I need you to go all over the world and tell people what I am able to do to one person. 
your assignment tonight is to go home in your closet, in your place where you pray, and ask the Lord, Lord, how do you want to change me and my world and America through me? Wherever you have your wildest dream, it's too small compared with what God has for you. Remember, I wanted to speak for the truth was nothing to what God is sending me and asking me to do today. Not because of me, but because of him, what he is capable of doing. He's an amazing God who wants to do amazing things. He created you for a specific reason and purpose. You American people, I watch you for half of my life from overseas in Romania. And I watch you sharing bread and laughing and crying with you for almost half of my life here in America. You brought freedom and Christ all over the world. It's time for American people to stand up on God's promises and bring Christ to America because we are the voice. We are the people that God wants to use. It's nothing about me. I'm a normal person like you are. My, I, I am tiny, but there, there is a huge God inside of me that gives me victory at any side, at any time. You have no idea how many times I said, Lord, you know how you created my brain. Can you speak louder? <laughs> and he speaks and he guides me anytime. Don't be afraid that you don't have what it takes, that you are not like so-and-so. You have a job that I cannot do it, and I have a job that God wants me to do it. There is no competition among us. We, that God gives us, all of us, plenty of jobs, and he equips us for something that you, you have no idea what, what you, you cannot even think about what he wants to do for you. So one more time, go home and talk with God and see what he wants you to do. You will be amazed, maybe like me also, oh, I can't do it, but he will do it through you. He will do it through you. The book will tell you exactly how he guided me at every single moment. In fact, I wrote the book to be read not only by Christian, by non-Christian. I am overwhelmed when people from all over the world will say, I accept you, Christ, reading your book, because my desire was for people to say, I want her God to be my God. Are we acting daily that people around us will say, I want her God to be my God. Are we afraid or walk or be like people in our culture? We are called to represent the Lord of the universe. We are princesses. We are not what the world tells us. You have to make a choice to believe God or to believe your fear or what the world tells you. I advise you to believe God. Your life and the life of people in America will never be the same. And remember, America brought freedom and Christ all over the world. Let's do it one more time with God's power and for his glory. May God bless you.
Oh, uh, that's one of the questions that Dr. Dobson asked me when I was on, uh, on he said, out of all the, the cities in the United States, why Dallas? The book explained, but I will explain it shorter to you. Uh, we, uh, we were told um, um, by, um, um, what's the shortest version I can say to you? Um, after the, the, the killer came, uh, I believe somehow President Reagan found out that the dictator wanted to kill me. And he came up with a solution, um, Ronald Reagan. I found out later on when I was in the uh, uh, in, uh, in United States that he decided to make a deal with our dictator. He said, I will give you most favored national status for one more year if you let Virginia and her family to live tomorrow. Uh, President Reagan was very afraid. The dictator said in a month. So they, they uh, made a deal. So when, when they made a deal, several uh, embassies came and said, come to our place, come to our place. England, people from England, you will find in the book. They said, come to England, we have more history. Don't go to people in the United States, they have a short history and everything. Maybe I was thinking, maybe you're right. But what, what the people at the American embassy did when how they supported me when I was in trouble and fighting for my life and my clients tells me that I should go to America. So I went to American embassy and they told us, you know, how to fill out the forms and everything. And I told them, I cannot put the, the name of the place where I can go. Uh, I need to pray. And they said, we need to send these, even without the name of the city where you want to go, to the um, to President Reagan. He wants them right away. He wants to see that you sign them, that you did this. So I prayed, and um, um, I, I had in Romania a Larousse dictionary. It's like the American dictionary here. And I was praying and praying and praying. I was saying, Lord, where do you want me to go? I know I want to go with you. I don't want to go with you. So tell me where. Uh, and my kids were playing noise and everything. And I heard the name of the city, but I, 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 I forgot it right away. And I said, it's the city where Kennedy was killed. What's the name of that city? <laughs> <laughs> but I have to tell you that the next day when I went to uh, American Embassy, they had the, uh, the file, the, and she was opening the file, and she said to me, so what God told you, what the city, and uh, she was uh, pulling the documents and everything, and uh, I said, Dallas, and she dropped the, the file. She said, ma'am, who told you I just opened the, the envelope? And I said, you asked me, and I told you, the, uh, God. She looked at me like, you really talk with God and God talks with you. Yeah, so that's, that's a story. It's maybe in more detail in the book. Uh, did you ever get to meet President Reagan? Yes, yeah, I had the opportunity. And I had the opportunity also to speak um, in Washington, D.C. And one time it was after uh, President Donald Trump. It's, it's what, what God is uh, able to do it. And I want to say it one thing. Uh, lots of people say, you, uh, you have a great platform. God is giving you a great platform. And I believe it's true, and with that comes uh, lots of responsibility. But I want to tell you that the platform that God gave me was not to speak uh, under, uh, after Donald Trump or uh, any other places. Uh, the platform started in the interrogation room. The, that, that was. And I want to encourage you, if God is giving you a platform and nobody knows and nobody pays attention or you think that is the worst, the worst place for you to be, remember that that is the platform that one day you will have your testimony shared to many. So pay attention to that. Tell them what happened. Oh, can you do that? 
Uh, no, 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 T Tyndale doesn't want me to, to tell that. Tyndale is my publisher. Um, I have to say that the story is so powerful. And the reason Tyndale and I agree with them is because we don't know for sure, but we believe that that story in itself is the story that helped lots of people to accept Christ. And I don't want to take that away from anyone. Yeah. But I want to share one thing with you. Uh, and, and I want to, uh, I w for two reasons. I want you to know and understand that I am human like you. I'm not polite when I'm saying that. It's true. And also to understand the power of God and to be patient when you don't see God working. I do remember uh, being in uh, um, house arrest, and you read more, uh, but um, we, we didn't have food. We had to, I had to work, stretch the food for my girls and tell them that I'm, I'm not hungry. We were not allowed to go anywhere outside and so forth. And I, I do remember one night, I believe that I was close to fainting. I was wondering if I, I would be alive for my girls to take care of them. And the girls were asleep and I was on the sofa and I took a pillow and I put it on my face and I cried really loud and I said, Lord, I know nobody can come inside and help us because we had guards with arms and, uh, you know, 24 hours. Uh, but I said, Lord, I feel that even you turn your back to us. And I felt like it was not true, but I wanted to say it because it was so painful inside of me. And I was so worried about girls and food and my own health and everything. And for some reason, the Lord wanted me to remember the day. And when I came to United States, I found out that there was the day, there was night in Romania, day, light in America, when Pres God put on President Reagan's heart to put someone in his cabinet to check on our whereabouts, <coughs> if we are alive or not, every single minute. I was nobody for the government in Romania, but in God's hands, I was his daughter and he put the most powerful man in the world to save my life. And just because we don't hear, we don't see sometimes what God is doing, it doesn't mean that he is not doing amazing things that we cannot even imagine. So I encourage you not to be a discouragement like me and trust God in every circumstances. Didn't you have some, didn't someone get by the guards to bring no, there was there was the the American uh, ambassador. She was. You will find in the book so many courageous people that was uh, like one of them is the ambassador of United States. She dressed up, put some clothes and a hat. It was it was uh, uh, like kind of Romanian uh, style. And she, we heard the doorbell. So we were very surprised because nobody was allowed to come. We were under house arrest. We opened the door and we kind of recognized, but we didn't recognize her, so we invited her. And she started to speak with the Romanian with an American accent, took her head, and we recognized her right away. <laughs> and she's, we, we asked her right away, how in the world you came? And he said, the, the policeman was there, but he didn't see me. <laughs> he didn't see me. So he said, I'm here because I need to report back to President Reagan that you are alive. And she, she kissed us and hugged us. And I have to tell you, when we came here, later on I found out that my second daughter who went to Harvard Law School, she said, I, I never forgot what, um, 
the ambassador's wife took the risk, and I wanted to be like her. I want to go to Harvard, and I want to. And she had an opportunity to go to South Africa and Zimbabwe and write, write constitution for women and so forth. But she took the risk, and she said, Virginia, don't worry about me. I have my um, a fake driver's license, uh, like a Romanian one, in, my, in case they ask me. But if they arrest it, my, my husband knows, so everybody will know that I will be arrested. They will come and save me. Yeah. And, and several others, several others, they were, um, I have to tell you that while I was in, uh, in the interrogation, uh, on the house arrest, uh, the government uh, wanted to interrogate all my clients, and they, they did it, and later on I found out, and they uh, never found one person. For 10, 12 years I defended, not corporation, individuals. So you can imagine, they hope that one person, not one person said something uh, to like, like the government wanted. In fact, later on when I met them, they said, you stood up for us, for us. I'm not a Christian, for Christian Romanians. It was my time to be courageous and stand up for you. So you never know when your courage will bring courage to others. Yes. I have to tell you that when I came to America, I didn't know one word in English, I told you. And my girls learn English much faster than me. I used to uh, help them with homework in Romania, and I was here uh, going to different places, and I said, what did she say? What did she say? <laughs> oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. I didn't like that. So what I did is I went to every single place that offered English as a second language, and I uh, listened to PBS, you know, like for kids um, kind of things. And also I took uh, postcards, you know, those, and I put um, the name of different things in the house and the pronunciation. So to learn. When I learned English, I thought, hmm, when I was trying to take those, those things down, I was thinking, oh, I can replace those with Bible verses. And if you come to my house, they are everywhere. <laughs> they are everywhere. There is one Bible verse. I won't say that this is my favorite, but I am a human being like you, believe me. And sometimes I worry. And there is a Bible verse in my kitchen. And I go there many times because it's Jesus speaking, saying, woman, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And I'm reading really loud and I said, yes, Lord, I believe. Yeah. I, I, like, I like when I'm afraid, I will trust in you because it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a, a reminder that, you know, the evil one will, will, uh, will try to frighten us, but we have a choice to trust, trust God. Yeah. Anybody else? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a, a verse that was brought to my mind to conclude with yours. There's a verse in Proverbs 21.30 that says there's no wisdom... <gasps> No insight, <gasps> no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Yes. In fact, I, lo I use this <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> I use it a lot of times because I, it's my way of encouraging people. And after I said this, do not be afraid because there is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the law. My next line is this. Ceaușescu, it's dead and I'm alive. Because it's true. He believed that he had all the power, and he had the human power. But God had the power to protect his daughter and everybody around. God bless you. Touch.
on, on my speech, but I promised that I will do it and I forgot, so here I am. When, when you read my book, you will learn about my childhood a lot. And a lot of people will say, you have, your childhood was worse than Cinderella. And it's true, it's true. But I wanna tell you as I told my kids, God was not asleep during that time. God allowed everything that happened for a reason. So he built me to what I was supposed to be in order to take all this with the communists. I want also to say, it, I will be a liar to say that everything is cured, even though I, I thought that it was, I'm fine with my past and everything is okay. But I learned not to go to North Park Mall or any mall during Christmas. Because one time I went to Christmas, and what do you see at Christmas? Families together, and mother and, and uh, daughter holding hands, and a child, and uh, fathers, uh, you know. And the minute that I saw that, it was, I was ready to burst into tears and I say, Lord, I will never have that. And I was with some friends and I didn't want to explain why. And I pray and I said, Lord, move my eyes from that to you. Because no matter what happened, all that pain, in fact, brought me to you. The Father that will never leave me or forsake me. So whatever happens in your life, whatever you think that you have to painful or you don't have like others, remember that God has a way to redeem them and to create them in a beautiful, beautiful way. And he created you for a an amazing future. Don't stay in your past. Forgive the past, forgive the people that um, did harm to you and go and, and uh, be with God. I had a time, you won't, maybe you, you think that it's hard to believe, when I was um, ready to invite, in fact, I invited God to my pity party. I was down, down on the floor, and I was uh, invited him. And he came to me, and he said, smiling, and said, Virginia, I know another party, a joyful one. Let's go. So anytime, anytime. You have, you have something like this, and you compare yourself with others, and you think you don't have or your pain or of the past, it's so powerful and everything. Don't stay there. Jump up and go with the Lord to the joyful party. Your life will be better. <laughs>